Hi, welcome to another Fundamentals Building Block video. Today we're gonna to take a look at the capacitance multiplier and its name is a little bit weird, but we'll get into why it's called that shortly. And this is a bit of a follow on to my previous video, which I'll link in down below and at the end about the uh, 7660 voltage inverter, which we looked at, which had uh, we talked about the output ripple of such a voltage inverter. So let's take a look at ripple in uh, like typical power supplies and how to get rid of it because using a capacitance multiplier is one of the ways you can do it and it's really effective. It's better than a voltage regulator. So let's take a look at a couple of scenarios where you might get ripple. Now you might have say a mains transformer like this. You might go into a uh, bridge rectifier like this of course. You're familiar with this and then you may have the output capacitor like this of course and you're going to get uh, some like ripple on there and this is very common for example if you're building an audio amplifier for example you want to generate you know positive and negative rails and you want them to be really clean especially for like class A amplifiers and stuff like that so really you know you want to get rid of that sort of ripple and you can increase the capacitance and to do that but really you might want to add some post regulation to that another one uh, might be well you've just got a DC to DC uh, converter like this so you've got just a positive voltage in and you might have either a higher uh, if it's a boost converter or a lower voltage um, output like this so you know this is like V out and once again you may add some uh, capacitance onto there but you're going to get some you know high frequency ripple out because these things uh, typically might be you know tens of kilohertz hundreds of kilohertz even up into the megahertz region but you're going to get you know tens of millivolts might be uh, typical or even hundreds of millivolts ripple or as per the previous video the classic 7660 charge pump uh, converter which basically you know has uh, some charge uh, which switches in capacitors in there and of course you have an output uh, capacitance like this so you've got V plus going in and you've got V out like this. But once again, it's going to have some ripple on it and it can be quite high. It can be tens of millivolts, might be reasonably low for a charge pump uh, converter like this, for example. Or as we saw before, it could even be a couple of hundred millivolts, you know, can really ruin your day. Especially if you're actually using this uh, 7660 to go from say plus five volts to minus five volts you're inverting that rail so that you can power your op amp from plus five and minus five volts like that having a five volt rail is fine but if you've got a couple hundred millivolts or even tens of millivolts ripple it's not very good ripple but that's ripple on your rail then that can really ruin your day so you want to clean up uh, ripple in you know any of these sorts of cases or you know other cases as well how do you do that well Typically, you might just go, well, that's easy, Dave. I'll just whack in a regulator. So, you know, you might have your minus five volts here and you might say have a minus four volt regulator there, just a low dropout regulator. That'll be super clean, right? End of your problems. Uh-uh. As it turns out, your voltage regulators, which are used everywhere, to give you what, like a supposedly clean regulated, hence their name, regulated output uh, voltage are actually quite poor at uh, attenuating large amounts of input ripple. Yes, they regulate well. It'll give you your precise minus four volts or 3.3 volts or whatever voltage you actually uh, set your regulator to. But if you've got tens or hundreds of millivolts of input ripple that you're trying to get rid of, LDOs can be a poor way to do it because the amount of attenuation of the ripple from input to output depends on uh, not only the type of regulator, it depends on the input to output or the dropout voltage of the regulator. As you get lower, it can potentially get worse. Here's a graph uh, which can show you a typical uh, result of that. And it depends on the amount of current on the output as well. The higher the output current, the, uh, the less effective it, the regulator is going to be at actually attenuating the ripple. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe it's actually a problem, let's go to the bench. I'll show you.
Let's have a look at a typical LDO regulator. In this case, I've got a little uh, SOT23 microchip MCP1700. It's a 3.3 volt low dropout regulator. I've just got an input filter cap, an input uh, and an output filter cap, and no load. But let's actually see what happens if we add some ripple, like a lot of ripple, to the input here. Let's actually add uh, 500 millivolts of ripple, right? Look what happens to the output. This is 10 millivolts per division. That ripple is coming through to the output like that. But look what happens if we add a load. 270 ohm resistor on there. So it's about, uh, what's that, about 13 milliamps or something like that. Look at the amount of ripple on here. Check that out. It's absolutely terrible. We're at 10 millivolts per division. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 millivolts peak to peak for 500 millivolts ripple input. It's not doing a very good job, is it? And check it out, if we AC couple both channels, um, the regulator's still regulating, by the way, still giving 3.3 volts out, 50 millivolts per division, input ripple here at 330-odd uh, uh, millivolts. The output ripple in green is almost the same. There's virtually no attenuation of that ripple at all at 10 kilohertz. It, it's hopeless. So as I demonstrated on the bench, voltage regulators, which are otherwise great for typical applications, are really not very good at getting rid of high amounts of ripple, especially at higher frequencies and higher loads. You saw it. Even at like, you know, the milliamp level, tens of milliamp level, which is not a very big load. If you take the example of the op amp that I gave before, well, they can take a couple of milliamps easily. So just a, generating a negative voltage rail for an op amp, especially from a charge pump like this, that could have, you know, tens or hundreds of millivolts of ripple. And you really want a low amount of ripple on your rail for whatever particular reason it is, and there's going to be a whole, you know, dozens of different scenarios. Low ripple is good. Low ripple is generally a good thing. You generally don't want it. But in some cases, it's absolutely critical, and you want to get rid of it. The voltage regulator just doesn't do it. Enter the capacitance multiplier. So let's just consider all these uh, scenarios the same. We've just got ripple, and we want to get rid of it. What's the easiest way to get rid of uh, ripple? Well, that's easy. You have a resistor and you have a capacitor like this. So this is in and this is out. And depending on the value of the R and the C, the larger you make the capacitance, the more ripple rejection you're gonna get. It's gonna attenuate your ripple. Even if you take the case of like a low value resistor, low-ish, like 100 ohms, for example, even with a small amount of current on the output, 10 milliamps, you're gonna get a one volt drop across that resistor at 10 milliamps. That's not terrific, especially if you're, you know, you're generating a negative five volt rail and you need, say, a negative, uh, you know, almost near negative uh, five volt rail on the output or even negative four, you can only get a lousy 10 milliamps there. And even with that low value of resistor, the lower value of resistor you go. So as you decrease the resistor value, you have to increase your capacitance value often to absurdly high values uh, to get the ripple rejection that you actually want. And of course, you can add a second stage on here. For example, you could add another 100R, and you could add another one, and that works, but you've doubled your amount of uh, voltage drop across there for a given current. And as you can see, an, a typical RC filter, even a multi-stage one, is not very effective at all for anything but ridiculously low currents, pretty much. So one scenario where an RC filter like this or a two-stage RC filter is fine is if you've got, say, a uh, pulse width modulator and you're, you want to actually uh, generate a DC voltage from that. Well, this is typically going to go into an op amp over here like this and the input uh, impedance of the op amp is very high, so you're drawing no current, so it's not really a problem. So you can use, you know, reasonable values of, you know, tens, of, you know, 10 microfarad, a couple of mic in there, and, you know, hundreds of ohms or 1K resistor or something like that, and you can filter out uh, your pulse width modulator down to, like, bugger all values. That's fine. But we want to actually do this for you know, tens of milliamps, hundreds of milliamps, even like in the case of like several amps for a big audio amplifier, for example. 
So how do we do this? Yeah, we can lower our resistor value down to one ohm or something like that, but then the capacitor has to be so ridiculously high in value up to the like Farad's range that when you are driving large output currents that it really becomes completely impractical. So what if we could multiply the capacitance? What if we could use a small capacitor value and somehow multiply it to make it appear bigger. Hmm, we can do that. Let's take a look. We can actually use the same trick you can use with voltage regulators when your regulator just doesn't have enough uh, current capability. You can put in what's put called a series pass transistor. On top of that, I'm sure I've mentioned that in a video somewhere. So we can do the same thing here. We can actually go like this and go into a transistor NPN in this particular case and have it like that and bingo this can be our V out like this and we can get large amounts of current that bypass this resistor like this and we can use a smaller value of capacitor here and you might have noticed this as is a, your classic uh, transistor building block circuit the emitter follower because the um, output is on the emitter of the transistor like that. So basically what that does is any voltage here is matched on the output here. It's an emitter follower. It just follows this value. And because the input current of the transistor like this is relatively small because a transistor has current gain, okay, you've got a smaller, smaller amount of current flowing through this resistor, it's not zero because it's a BJT, it's a bipolar uh, junction transistor. It needs some base current, but it has a gain. That transistor has a multiplying gain that multiplies the base current to give you a higher collector current. And that's where the multiplier comes in here. As it turns out, this simple configuration, which is basically an RC filter, with an emitter follower is what's called a capacitance multiplier. And some people don't call it that. It's just a basically an RC filter, which is a building block of its own, combined with a series pass transistor like this, which is again a building block topology circuit of its own. So you combine those two and it, in effect, the capacitance value C here, um, it gives you an effective capacitance value of not just the C, but C times beta, which is the gain of the transistor, hence the name multiplier. So the amount of ripple that you get on the output here is equivalent to a capacitance value, which is the value you use, let's say it's one microfarad, times the gain of the transistor, which might be 100. So you have an equivalent of 100 microfarads here. That's not a good example because, hey, you can just whack a 100 microfarads isn't very big. You could whack it in there, but you can see that when you get to large amounts of uh, current, it can be a really huge benefit. So with this capacitance multiplier, you can use relatively large values of resistor like this. You can use, you know, in the order of kilo ohms, tens of kilo ohms, and, you know, relatively reasonable values of capacitance. And again, you could actually put in a second stage there too if you are uh, really, you know, a multiple stage one as well. Now, of course, you've only got the uh, capacitance times the beta of the transistor. If you use a single uh, bipolar junction transistor, they don't particularly have high current gain. So yes, you guessed it, you can actually use, once again, another classic uh, building block, which is the Darlington pair, whoop, like this. There you go. That, that's a Darlington transistor. You can even use like two separate uh, transistors because you might have your favorite big high current pass transistor uh, here, for example, and just a smaller signal one uh, over here to feed in the base. And your Darlington pair actually um, has a much higher gain. Uh, so your uh, capacitance multiplier factor is even bigger. So you can effectively have, you know, many farads of capacitance here um, easily, like, you know, a Darlington pair might have a gain of a thousand or something like that. You can really ramp things up uh, in this sort of scenario. So you can really reduce your ripple to almost negligible levels, like half a bees dick.
but hey, you still might not want to use a BJT because you don't have enough gain. You know, you really want a small value of capacitance here and really uh, this resistor can't be too high otherwise it can uh, starve the base current even of a Darlington pair like this. So, you know, if you want really small values of uh, capacitance, large values of resistor, you guessed it, you can get rid of that and you can use a MOSFET like this. No whackers whatsoever. But using a MOSFET, you might have like a larger voltage dropper that it depends on what part you're choosing and things like that. But it means because it's a MOSFET, there is no gate. In this particular case, it's not a gate. It's not a base, it's a gate. You've got no uh, gate current here. So this value of resistor can be as high as you want. And that means you can use really seriously low values of capacitance to get your attenuation. And just like a regular uh, Darlington transistor, you could replace it with a uh, Slakai pair here, it's called, which is a uh, compound transistor. And I won't go into the advantages and disadvantages between those. Maybe that could be um, another video. But basically, you could either use a single BJT, a Darlington uh, configuration BJT, a Slakai pair, or a uh, MOSFET uh, configuration pass transistor. But it works basically the same thing the capacitance value gets multiplied by the transistor gain. And you can reduce your ripple to practically nothing. It's awesome. So I know what you're thinking. Well, if this uh, capacitance multiplier is so magic, why don't they just build reg voltage regulators like this? Well, you might notice here that there's no regulator element. There's no feedback coming back. There's no feedback loop, which maintains a regulated voltage. So this is not a regulator. The output voltage will change with the input voltage and then it'll change with like temperature of the transistor and all you know sorts of things if you're dealing with high power and stuff like that. Basically it, it's only of use if you want to get rid of ripple. It's not good for regulation. So you could get could use this circuit to get rid of the ripple and then use a voltage regulator on the output of that. That's a winner. But this to use as a voltage regulator doesn't really work. It's not the job of a capacitance multiplier. So that's pretty cool. Let's go have some fun on the bench, see what happens. Let's build up our capacitor multiplier. We've got a BD137 uh, power tranny here. Fairly typical sort of, you know, old school uh, power transistor. Not particularly high gain anywhere from like 25 up to 100-ish. I've actually measured it at 100 and we'll do that in a minute. But uh, there you go, just an NPN power transistor. A 1K uh, resistor here for R and the C uh, capacitance here is uh, 470 microfarads and we've got our 270 ohm load so as before we've got uh, about 4.2 ish volts 4.3 volts uh, DC in here with a 500 millivolt uh, peak to peak 10 kilohertz signal superimposed on that all ripple so 10 kilohertz ripple at a fairly horrible 500 millivolts and here's our output it is supposed to be a green waveform but it's got cursors on it um, so it looks yellow but there's our output nice and clean Look at that. And if we actually uh, go over here and switch it to AC and we go right down, oh, oh, we have to 500 microvolts per division. Look at that. It's still there, but wow, it's attenuated a lot. And that's just with a standard um, you know, non-Darlington transistor. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But if we go back to our DC coupling, we're getting about a 3.3 volts output there. You can see that there's roughly about one volt uh, drop due to the uh, pass transistor there. But as I mentioned, it's not regulated. So if we change our offset voltage like this, look, our output changes like that. So it is not a regulator. It's just to get rid of your ripple and the voltage drop here is going to be dependent upon your uh, load that you've got it's going to be dependent upon your base resistor the type of transistor that you've got and the gain as well so it's you know it just happens to be around about a volt drop in this particular case and if we change our base resistor here or our filter resistor from uh, 1k to 10k for example we'll find there you go we've now got a larger drop like that but and of course, our corresponding AC ripple should go right down like that. 
But we're basically just uh, down in the noise now. Yeah, there's a lot of noise due to all sorts of uh, crap. But you can see that there's basically no ripple that we had there when we had our 1K resistor in there. There you go. There's our 1K resistor, and you can see that. So it's a trade-off. As you increase uh, the resistor R here, it starves the transistor of base current. Therefore, you get a larger uh, voltage drop across the pass transistor, but you uh, increase the uh, ripple attenuation due to the just the RC filter ratio. And if we go down really low to 100 hertz uh, ripple here, you see we're 2 millivolts per division. It's still not much ripple. But of course, you can see it actually coming through. So once again, we're back at the uh, 1K resistor there. So if we really even wanted to knock out the uh, 2 millivolts peak-to-peak -peak ripple here at 100 hertz, then we could uh, change our single transistor to a Darlington pair, for example, that would have higher gain, and then we could use a larger value of resistor for a given capacitance and then filter it out that way. Or we could increase the capacitive value, but we've already got a pretty large 470 microfarad in there. So you wouldn't want to go much larger than that unless you had like a big audio amplifier, you had plenty of room and all that sort of jazz. But here's a little twist at the end. Let's actually confirm that we can actually get a capacitor multiplier in quote marks. Does it actually multiply this capacitance here, C, by the gain of this transistor, which I'm going to say is 100, and I've actually measured it as 100. Well, let's have a look. The um, the, fre the cutoff frequency, the minus 3 dB frequency, you should know it's one of the basic uh, formulas, 1 over 2 pi RC. That's for your RC filter. So for 1K that we've got in circuit, and I've changed the capacitor now down to 100 nanofarads here. So for 1K and 100 nanofarads, our cutoff frequency should be one point. 0.59 kilohertz so it should be 3 db down at that frequency but because we have a beta or gain of this uh, transistor of 100 so we should actually get uh, a cutoff frequency of 1 kilohertz and equivalent to 100 times that 10 nanofarads or 10 microfarads so our cutoff frequency should be 15.9 hertz well what do we get Let's actually turn it on. Look, I've got my uh, input signal here. My uh, input peak-to-peak -peak, uh, ripple is 470 millivolts. I've got it at 1.59 kilohertz here. So it should be way below that, right? Because if, if it is actually a multiplier and it's equivalent to 10 microfarads, our cutoff frequency should be 15.9 hertz. So we should get hardly any ripple at all. What do we get? Turn it on. Wah, 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 about 310 millivolts or around about that 1.3, uh, 1.59 kilohertz frequency, our minus 3 dB point. So it's 470 times 0 0.707, which is about 330, going to be near enough because we don't have much uh, resolution in there. So it's <laughs> the end tolerance in the components, of course. The minus 3 dB frequency is not this expected uh, multi capacitor multiplier. It's exactly the same formula as the RC circuit. Why is it so? Well, as it turns out, this is why a lot of people don't like the name capacitor multiplier, because it doesn't actually multiply this capacitance. It's not really 10 microfarads in terms of filtering like this. What it does is actually reduce the current through this resistor, and hence the current uh, that the capacitor has to smooth out by 100 times. So instead of having... Uh, uh, the uh, the whole load that we've got there of uh, 12, 13 milliamps or whatever it is um, flowing through this resistor here. We've got a hundred times less than that or about, you know, a couple of hundred uh, microamps flowing through this resistor. But in terms of uh, calculating your cutoff frequency, the formula is actually the same as it is for a normal RC filter. It's just that the current's are reduced. The capacitor isn't actually multiplied, but I guess it depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah, but as far as calculating the frequency, nah, it's exactly the same. So, capacitor multiplier, yeah, you either like that name or you don't. So if we actually uh, measure some of the voltages in here, we can uh, actually find the gain of this transistor. Let's just, you know, not be too precise, but across our 270 ohm load resistor here, 
we've got about 3.4 volts or so. That's about, you know, 12 and a half milliamps uh, through this load. And that 12 and a half milliamps is coming through the uh, series pass transistor here. And if we measure across our uh, 1K resistor there, it was about 0.12 volts or about 120 uh, millivolts or thereabouts. So therefore uh, 12 milliamps divided by 120, that gives us a gain of about 100 on our transistor here, which would be fairly typical. And of course, if we put that into a Darlington pair, we might get, you know, an order of magnitude increase in that gain. So we might get a thousand times instead of a hundred times, for example. And of course, this is all gonna uh, be dependent upon the actual uh, components used and, uh, you know, and the output uh, load current as well. It's gonna vary. Any data sheet for a uh, power transistor will tell you that the gain varies with your collector current. But the good thing is, is that we can just demonstrate that we can really reduce the ripple to, you know, basically negligible levels using this capacitor multiplier circuit or an RC filter with a series pass transistor, whatever you want to call it. And just for completeness, there is actually a variation in the capacitance multiplier that actually uses an op amp instead of the uh, series pass transistor. And it basically works the same way, but uh, the thing with that is, is that the op amp can only drive a certain amount of current. There might be uh, more stability like type issues and uh, also you're gonna be uh, game bandwidth uh, limited as well. So it's not a terrific solution. It's not designed for power um, applications like you get with a series pass transistor. So I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss in the comments down below or over on evblog.com. And thanks to all my uh, patrons over on patreon.com, uh, always linked in, in the comments down below. They often get to uh, see videos early before everyone else. Thanks. Catch you next time.